Hi. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. Um, my name is Rebecca Vargas from UCLA Campus Events, and I'm pleased to introduce a very special guest today. He began his career modeling in Los Angeles and Europe, and his soap opera career began as Carla Frenza on Days of Our Lives, in which he was voted Best Newcomer in Daytime TV's Reader's Poll. Currently, he stars as Brad Carlton on The Young and the Restless. <laughs> And um, this month in People's Magazine, he was uh, voted one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world. <laughs> and I, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm and silly welcome to Mr. Don Diamant. questions right here at the center mic. Hi. Um, a lot of times you hear about the daily grind of soap operas being very difficult because you just crank out page after page. And I was wondering how you deal with that, whether you feel like that makes it harder for you and you really do want to go on to features because of that or whether you're pretty happy with it. Well, our show is kind of the exception. We have, we have two sound stages. So... We generally work a half day on the show. Sometimes wow. it's at 7 in the morning and out by 9.30 that morning. I'm sure you've all heard of like soaps. You're there from 6 a.m. till 10 o'clock that night. You've heard of all these horror stories. So working under those conditions, even when there's a lot of dialogue, even when you're working every day, a lot of times you get out early so you can go to the gym or go spend time with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, husband, wife, kids, whatever. You have a life outside of the show. So that helps that, that grind. When I was on Days of Our Lives about nine months, six years ago, that was more of that like you're in six, you're there until six at night or later, and you got that real feeling of being in grind. So. Thanks. Did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. How much do you have to the storylines? Like, sometimes are you ever, like, unhappy with, like, the way things are going with your character? Like, if you ever find yourself, like, in kind of an irritating situation, like, sometimes, like, whenever they bring up the men's line, it always seems like kind of just like a really, like, like a kind of boring situation. I mean, you've had, like, really strange ones, like, block on the game and stuff like that. <laughs> daily basis if there's something in the script that you really feel strong about the character would not do that would not say something. Then you can go to the executive I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to agree with this. Can you talk about it? And they'll tell you but as far as the overall story the only God makes that decision. God is God is Bill Bell. God on earth is Bill Bell. He owns the show. He creates the show. He's the head writer of the show. What do you think of like every little storyline? Well, he he's, he's him and the team of writers that he has. He does everything. We bow to him. So we really have no input to. I've heard that there are actors that go up and say, you know, Bill, I have an idea, and I guess he listens. But my philosophy is, you know, tell the boss what to do. So, uh, 
Generally, you don't know, even size and you do what you want. So you don't mind? <coughs> like, like, do you ever have... Do you like get bored or do you yeah. get aggravated? Yeah. Or, yeah. Sure, of course. Of course. The cage, as a matter of fact, <laughs> sure you know, um, <laughs> that was initially, as weird as it was, it was a lot of fun to do. It was really different. I the end of it. I was sick to death. <laughs> Ready to have it finished. And how did he get along with that actress? <laughs> Hi. Um, how did you go from modeling to acting? Um, my present theatrical agent walked into my print agency and had lunch with my print agent. Everybody hear me? Yeah. Got lunch with my print agent. He saw my picture on the wall and he asked about it. Uh, I came walking in as he was walking out and he introduced himself said that um, he'd like to talk to me. And I said, uh, okay, I'll talk to anybody. <laughs> Whereas most models like which I wanted to be active and I wasn't really particularly interested, interested in it. Most models are just like fall at his feet, you know, just to just have a chance to talk to them. And my attitude was kind of like, okay, sure. As it turned out, that ended up being a, a good thing because he interpreted interpreted that as being a little bit of an attitude, which, you know, you don't want an actor, you don't want them to be like too wishy-washy, you're just kind of bland. So he, he thought I had a little bit of an attitude, went back, told his associate about me. I came in, we had the meeting, I had studied a little bit, so I came back and did a scene for him, and he sent me out to some casting directors, and got some good feedback. He signed me, and I started working where was that? It's very lucky. What was it? Mm -hmm. It was a film called Go for the Gold with uh, Bruce Dern and Catherine Ross. Jackie Cooper was the director. Two weeks into filming, the financing was gone. <laughs> and there went the film. And uh, so I was like, I was tight one second and gone the next. So that was my rude introduction to this business. Well, thank you. How was your relation with Terry Lester on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's Jack. Old Jack. We we uh, we got along. Uh, we didn't hang out or anything, but we got along fine. It wasn't nearly like a relationship on the show. And also, what happened with this character? Why did he leave? Well, I guess he left pretty much with what all the press said. He wasn't happy on the show anymore. He wasn't happy with the direction the show was taking. He felt that his character wasn't being given the time that had been given before. There wasn't, I guess he felt his character wasn't a priority maybe anymore. There was too much attention to focused on the cricket character and that whole storyline. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I also think that Terry was uh, been doing this over 10, 11 years or something, working a lot all the time, and just just bored if he didn't change. There was no secret. Um, do you think that being on a soap opera makes it harder for you to be taken seriously as an actor? I think it probably used to, because soap opera acting for years was kind of like that, and that is what some people thought. We were, we were very sick. It was generally, let's find this good-looking guy or good-looking girl, put them on TV, and have them say these words. And uh, that's changed a lot. You know, Tom Selleck was on Young and Russell's entire effect. <laughs> That has been on daytime is on prime time in the film. Um, there isn't that, that stigma associated with it anymore. Uh, it's just not as, as tough. Um, I guess it's that whole what, Anthony Geary thing. And uh, what was that general hospital story one with Anthony Geary and Jimmy Francis? And uh, Taylor went on. G.H. and Sammy Davis Jr. has gone on, I think, G.H. 
So um, the whole the whole outlook on soaps has really changed a lot, and actors actors have a little bit more respect than they used to, I guess, after working on. Okay, um, how did being voted one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world by People <laughs> Magazine affect um, the interest in your career? Have you gotten a lot more offers or I've, from I've gotten a lot. I've gotten a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know what she's talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she hasn't done anything. Uh, I was on Oprah last week and so they were interested in me doing the show because of that. As mm -hmm. far as you in the business? Yes. Uh, it has that. It has it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I get a lot of hard I get a hard time with the mm -hmm. Hi. Well, um, are you really close with any of the other cast members, or do you like to keep a professional distance? I'm very close. Uh, I'm actually that close with an old cast member. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm real close. I'm good friends with Michael Damien, who plays Danny. I'm good friends with Michael that Nathan and I, we don't talk like as much as we used to, but we're very good friends. I don't hang out a lot outside of the show, but because we spend so much time together. Um, so yes, yes, there are obviously people closer to two than others. Some people I hardly even see on the show, but they're involved in certain uh, storylines. Thanks. What's it like getting used to um, like a character change? Like people like the new Ashley or... Um, Jack, people that you were like close with and Jill and stuff, is that, is it hard to be like, on a different basis? Like, sure. the characters have a close relationship with the part of the life of this place. Did you hear a question? Yeah. Yeah, it is, uh, it can be hard, depending on the actor. There's a lot to do with that. For example, Peter Bergman plays Jack. Click. Click. Yeah. <laughs> he came in, he was really focused, he was really uh, very dedicated, he wants to do really well, and he's doing a great job. Um, he was to Terry, but he's really doing a great job, and it's not difficult. Yeah. With Brenda uh, Epperson, who's uh, uh, it was harder, she wasn't as strong. You hear really as strong uh, as an actress says. Davis, and uh, it was harder. She's, she's come along so even better. But um, those are two opposite extremes. Peter was really easy, and she was more, more difficult. So that was the nature of the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go along with it. What's a typical work day for you? A typical work day is. <laughs> The work day is actually atypical of so in general. Like I said before, we have two sound stages. Uh, if you're on the morning stage, you're in the seventh, and you can be out anywhere from 9.30 <coughs> till 2 o'clock in the afternoon if you're only on the first stage. If you're on the second stage, your call is 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and you can be out anywhere from 2 till 6 if we're on time. And that depends on where you are taking it. Okay. If you're first up, uh, on the second stage, you can be out by 2 o'clock. So you're there for a couple hours. And, uh, we're very lucky that way. And on both stages, you can be there from 7 till 6. So when do you, when do you get the scripts? Do you get them? When do we get them? Do you get them that morning? And you... No, we get them, I don't know, five days a week ahead of time. But you don't really, maybe you read them over, but you don't study them. But you have five others to look at. <laughs> We're about two weeks ahead. Um, we take two weeks ahead. Yeah. Um, we've been hearing a lot recently in the news about all the obsessed fans, and I know that's a big problem with soap operas. And I wonder if you've had any experiences that have been similar. Anybody carrying a gun in here? <laughs> um, I've had a couple of fans that have been a bit excessive. Um, one person my my agent called. Girl. <laughs> you? And uh, finally he got pretty crazy with her and he called her and told her, I won't say exactly, so he told her to back off basically. Uh, the police would have to 
get involved, and she she did. I don't know if she's like working around somewhere, but it's a consideration. It's something that I don't give it much much thought, but you know, it's a consideration. Well, with what happened with Rebecca Schaefer, are right. you going are you going to be getting involved with any? Do you think you'd like to see more people, especially from the soap opera community, because I know that people watch soap operas every day and really feel like they know these people. It's even worse than with prime time. And if you like, if you but see, that's what's weird in the Rebecca Schaefer thing. She was kind of kind of an obscure personality. It was like a household name or no. anything. No. And uh, I had I had never seen the show. How long was that show on for? Less than a year. Yeah, so I had never heard of her or seen her, but some lunatic picks her out and decides, you know, to go shoot her. What can you do? I mean, I don't, I don't exactly know how to, how to handle it. If I was Don Johnson or something like that, they get threats regularly, so you have to have security. But what, what would I, what am I going to do? Carry a gun? Have security with me everywhere I go? I mean, if that's going to happen. Happen. If you're getting stuck in weird letters and stuff like that, then you have somebody checked out. I don't, I don't know how the hell to deal with it. Or does it matter? Somebody's going to be wrapped in case they saw it. But to like, think about getting into like, color costumes, what do you think like, when you first get into like modeling and acting? Because like, you're just putting yourself like in the public eye. You just choose to say, well, I guess I'll just be like in the tabloids or whatever. Don't you like, aren't you afraid of losing your private life? Uh, no, I, I wasn't. I uh, I've been very lucky. Things just kind of kind of happened. I didn't go out pursuing my career as much as it kind of came to me. When I did, I took advantage of it and found that I really enjoyed what I was doing. But uh, that wasn't really a consideration for me. It might be because. You know, when I was in high school, matter of fact, I went to high school like far from, you know where Brentwood is? Yeah. You know, I was, I went to high school. And I was an athlete, and I played football and baseball and basketball. And I was kind of used to attention being on teams. Um, it, it doesn't, at this point, it doesn't bother me. I don't know. If you can, I suppose, again, if you're a, if you're a Tom Selleck or a, or a Tom Cruise or something like that, Maybe then it gets really bothersome. <clears throat> but it's not like I have paparazzi hanging outside my house or <laughs> right now. But I never gave that any thought to the truth. Oh boy, should I do this? Should I be an actor because I'm successful? I go to my life. I never gave that to A lot of that's how you deal with it too, what you do with things. If you're a personality, a personality that gets really agitated by that, you're going to have more of a problem dealing with it. I pretty much uh, take my career just a day at a time, and uh, whatever happens, happens. Although I do, I just signed this new deal, and I do not plan to sign another one after this three years. And during three years, because of the outs of the contract, and after these three years, I would, I do plan, right now I'm thinking that I'll go and try to get some I don't know I'm getting it's boring, but it's encouraging. Do you, you then you? Uh, you mean? Okay. Uh, how much <laughs> how much <laughs> how much you uh in your character? Such a hard question. I don't know. I don't know. If you know I pretty much agree with what I heard Mel Gibson say once, which was there's a part of you in every character that you play, even if you're if you're playing a murderer, there is some place in the dark recesses of your person, at least in most people, that is capable of doing that. Um, and you just kind of find that, you find something to motivate that in yourself. It's there, whether it's somebody doing something to your family that brings that out of you, that, that ability to go in and kill somebody. There's, there's, um, there's, uh, there's got to be aspects of yourself in every character you play. As far as this particular character, it's 
not like he is an expert or anything. So uh, we're not like miles apart from each other. As far as exactly how are we similar, how are we different? I don't know. I don't really see him. He's, I'm lazier than me, that's for sure. He's better looking than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Was it? Um, do you have any inside info for us on what's going to be happening on the scope for the next few weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Right now I haven't been working that heavy. I'm heading into real heavy story in the next couple of weeks. I haven't been working that heavily, so I don't read the scripts. And I don't get a chance to watch the show, so I really don't know. But you probably know better about what's going on tonight. Probably you're not involved in that story. You're, you're still working, but you just don't have to go in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Great job. You're paid for doing nothing. We get paid by the by the show. But uh, yeah, that's, that's it's like if you're working three days a week, that's great. The money's really great. I'm off is great. I. I do a lot of personal appearances. A lot of the country malls and car shows. And, uh, you've heard that stuff? You need to sign autographs. It's the same kind of thing, except you're talking about 3,000 people. Talking to 3,000 people and answering their questions and signing autographs. Um, I do that. A lot of people. I like going to movies. I like uh, going to the beach and playing basketball. I don't go to the parties a lot. I'm not really into the whole Hollywood thing. That's the question. Pretty boring, I know. I don't know. <laughs> I like to travel. I like to go like, to Santa Barbara and stuff like that. I don't know what to do with that. Um, which of the actors on the show do you like most respect or like Bill Bell just because they got there? Show. Is it the actors? Yeah, the actors. Because I know you have a lot of your character has a lot of admiration for like John Abbott and stuff. But in reality, uh, as an actor, I, I, I had a lot of respect for Ben Maven. I thought he was a wonderful actor. So here I was, like really, with no background at all in the business. And, uh, I come in, I'm working with an Emmy Award winning actress who was, has all this theater background. And, in class a lot. Um, she was a great help to me. She was really uh, uh, took her time and helped me out a lot as an actor, so I respected her talent and her kindness. And one more thing about uh, Brenda Dixon, whatever happened to her. I mean, I know that the town was said she was a bit, but it was she was a little bit too much like her character. How's uh, Jess Walton? Jess is great. Here's a person who's very unlike her character. She's sweet as can be, and it's a pleasure, pleasure to work with. Eileen Davidson, who played the old actress, yeah. I thought she was uh, a wonderful actress. We're friends. <laughs> There's no relation to that, is there? No, no relation. But I thought she was anybody. It's very kind of a convoluted thing, but daytime interviews and nominations and all that stuff. It's really a weird process. And a lot of times it doesn't make any sense who gets nominated and who doesn't. But uh, there's an actress. I thought she was just, just wonderful. Here's a striking, beautiful woman who was just, just a wonderful, wonderfully talented actress. Also, it wasn't like all worried about her looks. And, you know, and she was just, she was great. Uh, she, she, never she never got to that yeah. Oh, she didn't quit on her own? She left the show. Oh, did she give a place? Yeah, or she was there. No, she wasn't there. Yeah. She left on her own. And, uh, actually, John, 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 Jerry Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> Plays my father, my ex wife my mom. He's a true guy. So everybody, you got to have respect for anybody that can go out and make this stuff work. A lot of it is exposition. A lot of it is repeated a lot. And, uh, do it the amount of time that we do it, the amount of dialogue we do it. Anybody who is in daytime and deliver that dialogue, do it well, uh, deserves, deserves uh, respect. I haven't watched this show in a while, so that's well, not. Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> what your character is doing? Like, who, what I've been doing, I'm trying to see Ashley. I'm involved with Ash and Leanna. Um, I'm working. Uh, I'm sorry, Anna. 
symbol a hodí to vyplňové. show that much because we work together. Um, when I'm not working, I hang out with my friends that are, most of my friends I hang out with are in the business. Others from high school. And girlfriend. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time with people like uh, my family. Like I said, my family. I have a little year and a half old niece and a six year old, I mean a year and a half old nephew and a six year old niece. And I spend a lot of time with them. So I don't hang out with people. I obviously hung out for a long time with Lord of Warren before I went out with her for years. And I still keep contact with her. I still talk to her. Other than that, no. Do you mind asking how old she I'm 27. I was going to answer that. I was going to say only if you scream. <laughs> because everywhere I go when I do these personal appearances I talk about, they ask how old you are, you say 27. Everybody screams. <laughs> like I could say 23 when I was doing it. I was 23. Everybody screamed. And I, I can never, never figure that out. <laughs> Why do they scream when I'm 93? <laughs> <laughs> how do your junior high school, um, like, cows think of you now that you're like a superstar? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a very funny story. My real name is Feinberg. My mother's maiden name is Diamond. So I took my mother's maiden name. When I started modeling when I was 18, and since it's become uh, it's legal. But uh, when they'll come with me to like a personal appearance, or they'll see me in people, but particularly the personal appearance, I'll bring, I'll bring them with me. And here I walk out on stage, and there's 3,000 girls screaming. A girl will walk up like you know, trembling and crying. <laughs> <laughs> and and, 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 and they just sit there and say, It's only the fun. Fine, it's only the fun. They can't like it. It's a sick, sick game. What happened with uh, Tom Beard? Because I know he was pretty shaky. I mean, I, I just thought he was a shaky actor as it was. He just seemed always nervous as an actor. I don't know if that was the character he was really supposed to portray or not. But it just seemed like his character just vanished. You know, the whole album. I guess it, I, I don't know the whole ins and outs of that whole, that whole story. He still chances to her. I don't know. About that. I don't know the, the I, I don't know the ins and outs of that whole story. Why he left, or if he was, if he was fired. I don't really know. What, what, uh, and I guess along with that question, there's a lot of you know, there's groups in the show that that, that never connect. You know. And is it pretty much like that off stage? And like, like you say, you don't know about Tom Beers while on the show. You had no. Well, scene you know everybody, but you're obviously closer with the people you work with, than the people you don't. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, a timing set up at different times, so right. you don't have to deal with those people. Are, well, right. But not when you're on. But they're on the stage, and when you're not, you pass the makeup, and you pass the makeup, and you talk in the morning. But you don't hang out. People you work with, you're closer to the people you don't. I just wondering, um, since your mom, I heard, helped out with your fan mail. Where'd you hear that? <laughs> um, I think I read it, or yeah. I saw it in the interview. I don't know. And, and with the thing, with the magazine, um, I just wondering, does it ever get embarrassing having her read the things which I'm sure you get, you know? <laughs> My mom's pretty cool. She's pretty hip, actually, so it's okay. I did get a, uh, <laughs> I got a 17-page letter from a guy. <laughs> like to have done. And, uh, uh, and this, was, uh, this is something my mother had the pleasure of, uh, of reading. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, so, I don't know, I don't really get embarrassed by it, but these things do happen. You get underwear in the mail and stuff like that. Not for me, somebody else's. So, uh, 
for me. What's the strangest thing you've got? Well, you have a letter like that? Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know, underwear and so on. Like <laughs> <laughs> I had a sign that had an appearance over the weekend. A girl walks up with her underwear. <laughs> like, are these newer you? Brad Carlton, not Jack Adams. Well, Brad <laughs> might just signed a new contract, so I don't think Brad's too much danger. <laughs> okay, as far as like with the stats, which is about the oh. CEO. Or, oh, I don't know. There's always going to be that, that conflict. Knock me off. I'll be battling back. I mean, I don't, I don't really don't know the story. They don't tell us. Can you and Jack have a fight if you guys want to get some <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I didn't let that go. I mean, wait, me and That's about Tim? six months ago. You mean Tim Sullivan, the professor? No, nah, well, you and Terry Lester got to push me. Well, no, I guess not. Right, you guys are so much other. I hit him once and knocked him down, but it wasn't much of a fight. Tim Sullivan. Yeah, that's right. You guys had a long fight. Had a whole lot of down drag out thing. And uh, uh, I didn't, in that fight team, I had take, I did karate for a long time when I was younger. I they did the choreographed fights with the stuntman. And uh, so I was used to doing this kind of stuff. The guy who played uh Tim Sullivan. Heck. <laughs> <laughs> so that gets real dangerous when you do a fight scene with somebody who's just not used to throwing a punch or taking a punch or doesn't have any idea about doing that stuff, especially when the camera's rolling and that adrenaline starts to pump. You feel like you're in a fight. <laughs> I feel like you're actually in a fight. When it starts pumping, and somebody's not used to doing it, somebody can get hurt. But uh, fortunately, he didn't hit me, and I didn't hurt him. There's some light contacts there. He was also like totally tatted up. Elbow pad, knee pad, stomach pad, back pad, the whole bit. And then, uh, so he didn't hit me. I was going to say, uh, how are people like you go out? Mind that you recognize often. They really, really. Sure, sure. They don't, they don't uh, rush you. Because I know Doug Davidson lives where I live. <laughs> and my sister and I were driving in a car and we saw it and we like, followed into his house. <laughs> just to, like, just to check it, you know, just to check it out. It was really nice car. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't, I mean, we didn't, like, try to run them off the road. No, we were just like, we oh, didn't wow, try to run them off the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was really it. odd. You know, you don't like go running after them. But, you know. Um, no, in LA, people, people are calm. You know, they'll come up and ask for autographs. Most of the time, they're pretty calm. Do you find that annoying? No, it's always happening. I mean, if I'm like trying to catch a plane, so like help you walk with me and try to catch a plane. But generally, no, I don't feel uh, the love at all. I've never, I've never not signed. When you're outside of LA. Anyone who is left in the show pocket, then it's like you can't go out anywhere because oh, really? your mom sees it again. And uh, in New York, as a matter of fact, I was in New York or something last year with my agent who had walked down to Fifth Avenue. He's been thinking New York is like, it gets a little hairy. It's not I was a model before I was an actor. Oh. My, my present theatrical agent came into my print agency and saw me have lunch with my print agent at the time and he saw my picture on the wall. <clears throat> I did scene for him, sent out some casting directors and got some good feedback. Oh, what my first, first thing was a film that never got completed. A guy in a divorce court. <laughs> <laughs> Between Days of our lives. <laughs> of television uh, between Days of Our Lives, Night of Days of Our Lives, and of course. <laughs> I remember seeing, like, I guess it was a rerun or something, and I was like, that's part two. Is that like a popular thing? Every actor, you know, you go into the divorce court. Everybody does it. That's how Donald Thomas got the very right. And uh, does he get bothered by, like, the fact that they're playing? Does he get bothered? <laughs> I don't know. Ed and I are good friends, so I'll, I'll give him a hard time about the 
It's pretty easy going about it. Yeah, he's a great guy. Oh, yeah, he's fine about it. But I'll go in the booth and give him a heart. You know, I'll give him a heart. He handled it. Um, although you never was like, and she is good looking and person. I have lots of scenes with her. What? I don't know. Oh, Cassandra. Got it. Cassandra. Yeah. Um, and is she as gorgeous in person as she is? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. All I knew is people wanted it to end. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I really don't know why Joe decided to drag it on as long. Sometimes, sometimes they'll start a story and then find that the, the actor's playing a part. If it's a new character, actor, isn't that strong? Yeah. And he'll end it quick because it's not that strong. Sometimes they'll find that uh, that an actor's not that strong, but they start to improve, and then they'll drag out the story. Sometimes he finds that uh, people are writing in a lot, I guess, and like the story. I don't, I don't really know why that lasted as long as it did. Uh, it's over now. Yeah. Um, what's a normal work day? Like, how many days do you go on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, leave it alone. Sorry, I It's okay. A normal day? Yeah. Uh, well, the show is 52 weeks a year, five days a year. Right. Two weeks off of Christmas, but we work. We work uh, Saturday, so we get those two weeks off. Um, a normal day is first, we're at two, two stages. You're in at seven on the first stage, and depending on where you're in the taping schedule, you can be out anywhere from nine till two in the afternoon. So you can be in for a couple hours a day. If you're um, on the second stage, you call it twelve, and you can be out anywhere from two to six in the afternoon. So. Um, we're real lucky that we have a good schedule. You. Well, I'm wondering, you're the only one in the opening credits that takes on the shirt. How do you feel like that? <laughs> 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 Absolutely. <laughs> I've had enough of it. Um, well, I don't know. My good looks have. Uh, uh, have gotten me in the door. Uh, you know, as a model. So I mean, you don't, you don't feel just a little bit negative towards it? Because obviously, when we see you, we see you as like a piece of me. Right? <laughs> 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 you know, no, that's fair. That's a fair. That's a good question. Or as Danny singing, or just as a pretty model. Well, <laughs> Brad, when he came on the show, he was like the gardener, and the shirt was on, <laughs> and all that <laughs> stuff. Um, Tell you the truth, it kind of helps me because a lot of good-looking guys, uh, I'm sure about the whole bit, get a reputation as as just being a good-looking guy. You can't really act. Um, for me, it's worked real well because uh, um, I've gotten a lot of respect from people as an actor. So, uh, as opposed to a lot of guys who are very stiff, people in magazine, I'm really just like lunatic inside, but I'm just being nice to me. Uh, of my acting. My looks don't get away from my acting. As far as your perception of me, um, I can't do anything about that. If that's how uh, you're going to do it, that's, that's just fine. I, I am, I guess, right now, 
kind of like, I hate to use this word, but it's whatever everybody uses, I guess I'm like the hunk, the one who takes his shirt off and does most of that stuff. That's okay. I really don't. I don't know how to answer the question. I don't care. I really know it doesn't bother me. So you're saying that as an actor, you know you're going to go past that image because I feel confident about it. It doesn't. It's only Nina Fosh, who is a very well known, well respected acting coach in the city and in the country. When I first met her, she told me that my looks would be my biggest asset and my biggest curse. It'll get you in the door, but people will also have a a uh, predetermined idea about how you are, how what kind of actor you're going to be. Because you're good looking. People think you'll be uh, obnoxious or arrogant or stiff or whatever. So you'll have to go into a reading sometimes and make people stop looking at you. And, and you have to erase whatever it is they're already thinking about you. So, but it'll get you in the door. I would love to do, I'm, I'm like the loon on the set, me and Doug Davidson are kind of like the crazy ones on the set. I would love to do uh, comedy. As a matter of fact, I was going to leave the show because this whole thing happened with uh, a sitcom, a prime time show, and uh, that's why I was going to leave the show. I would love to have that opportunity someday. Uh, we'll see what happens. I just had to do a fun thing on the show with Leanna, just aired I think last week or something, where she gets me into the pillows. Yeah. See that? That was fun to do. But uh, uh, I'd like to do comedy. I'll let you know that. I'll, I'll try anything. That's a good. That's a good question. You know, and I also have to, oh, oh, okay. the answer to that. I've gotten a lot of publicity, good publicity, from shirt yeah, coming off and all that and all that stuff. So uh, it hasn't hurt me yet. As a matter of fact. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't do anything. If you're real concerned about that, you would have never done that. I did this one two years ago. So I know I didn't have to do it, but I did. Let's see the centerfold. Let's see the centerfold, though. Yeah. Let's see the centerfold. This is like, this was a whole The whole the whole point of that reason I'm showing you that is because I have I've not I've not shied away from doing that kind of stuff. You know, simply whoever that actor said doesn't matter what they say about you, as long as they you the ignorant. Right? That's pretty much uh, the thing. And even you look at the Tom Cruise or somebody like that, whatever movie he's in, you know, when he did Top Gun, when he did the movies that first got him going, he's always taking the shot. But does it ever bother you that someone says, oh my god, he's so good looking? I mean, when you hear it, do you ever say, you know, well, don't you want to know me rather than you know me? But everybody in the world is not going to know me. Mm -hmm. you know, some of the people that are close to me are really going to know me. You know, so doing something like this, you get to know me a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Um, as I said, if it was just there's plenty of people, in fact, since I've been on the show, that started the show the same time I did, real good looking guys that are no longer on the show. And some of them because, because they were real good looking but they couldn't perform. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I've uh, improved myself at this point as an actor. So uh, if people can't get past that, and that's just it's their, it's their problem. It's not something I can uh, I don't know about it, but there's a scene in some type of resentment towards Laura Lee Bell, like the fact that she's not the You know everything. You spy. You were Bell. I haven't watched it for a long time, but uh, my sister had been dead in six minutes. So. Uh, Great. Yeah. So basically, like, Laura Lee Bell, I mean, because. I know a lot of people get bugged with her character. Is there a lot of resentment? I, I can't. Not resentment, but just bothered by her character. The fact that well, she is bad is her own show. I'm sure there is resentment. There is resentment because <laughs> she allowed her to show her. She, 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 she hasn't been like, like she was. She hasn't been working like that. She's still bad. I can't speak for anybody else. I, I imagine there is resentment. I mean, Terry certainly seems to have resentment. 
Terry Lester. Yeah. I imagine there is, and uh, there's a lot of actors on the show, and the show is also revolving around the boss's daughter. There's bound to be resentment. Um, I, I can't, I, I haven't had somebody walk up to me and say, well, I feel like I'm going to back that. Well, working so much. Yeah. So I feel that? Yeah. I don't, I don't resent it because if it was my dad, he'd do the same thing for me. <laughs> so, what? Well, does she carry mats? Oh, does she? No, she's great. She has no attitude at all. She's just like everybody else. She does not have, uh, have any attitude. She's a sweet girl. And listen, I'll tell you the truth, I feel, I feel bad for her because there was a lot of press, um, negative press, about her and about the show. Because she's the boss's daughter and all that stuff. That's hard to work under those conditions. And uh, she's a good kid, and I, I, uh, I kind of feel for her. And I don't present her because, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm not the boss, I just do what he tells me to do. I write me a lot, I can write me a lot. Going back to the question about screen, and I think that looks pretty cool to be in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I appreciate it. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Bad. 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 I don't have them, I don't even have them drawn up, uh, so I don't use them at all. Uh, some people have them drawn, but don't rely on them. Right. They'll just maybe if they're up or something, they'll lens off and come back. Yeah. Because, you know, we use three cameras. So when the light is and the camera's on me, obviously it's off the other actor, and they'll lens off, go to the key card, come back, and pull the line. And some people rely on them totally. I suppose some. I suppose sometimes if you're not sure what your next line is, and you could probably look at it in such a way where the audience wouldn't pick up on, you know. Well, that's what I mean. We have three cameras. Oh. So if I'm talking to you right now, there's a camera here, there's a camera there, and there's one in the middle someplace. So while this camera is on you, my light's off. And while you're talking to me, I can glance away and come back, pick up my next line and come back. Of course, uh, the audience will never know. And even if we were caught doing it, they'll just pick it up there and do it again. Or they'll edit it in such a way that you don't notice. But again, I don't use them, so I don't do it at all. Um, you probably already mentioned this too, but when you first came to LA, did you study with uh, Nina Bosch? I, I, when I first came to LA, I was three years old. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I, when I first started acting, I did study with Nina. Yeah. Oh, you did? She's great. Any of you were actors out here or just fans of the show or anybody an actor out here? Did you work with others as well? I was in the law studio with uh, the late Peggy Fury. Well, I actually worked more with others. And uh, pretty much the I really haven't studied a whole lot. Just those two, I mean, you just studied with those two at first, right? stuff with those two. Yeah, most of my training has really been on the job. Yeah. I think that's where you pick it up the most, isn't it, from experience? I think so. Yeah. You know, I think uh, the best way to, to learn is, is on the job. If you apply yourself, especially with daytime stuff, if you really apply yourself to it, it's a great way to learn. Let's face it, like going to scene class every day and getting paid for it. <laughs> this is a great thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was wondering, you said you have a one for three? I was trying to go on this one. Is there as much competition uh, um, auditioning for soaps as they say? It's like any other, uh, any other audition, any other job. Agents get breakdowns every day of, uh, of um, what's, what, what parts are being cast in the industry, film, television daytime, nighttime, whatever. And uh, the actors go out on the interviews just like the same as going on a film interview or a prime time interview. It's the same as just as competitive as any of those. 
How do you deal with nervousness in front of the camera sometimes? Do you channel it towards positive energy or can it trip you up sometimes? It depends on your handle it. You know, sometimes, you know, I... Well, ultimately, if you're, you know, if you're on the show, I don't get particularly nervous yeah. anymore. Um, and what, what you want to be in the scene is totally focused on the person that you're working with, and totally concentrating on what you're doing. And if you achieve that, you really don't have time to be nervous if you're busy listening to what the person's saying. You don't have that much time to be nervous. Um, if you retain that focus, yeah. Pardon me? If you retain that focus. Yeah, well, if you're not, you're not going to be in the scene. Exactly. And you're going to have a problem anyway. Uh, but as far as, like, just before you take, everybody gets that. You, even, I mean, I, even now, I just, like, just before I get a little bit of that. But on the other hand, I can be joking and, and joking around. Look, literally, as they make the counts, five, four, three, two. I'll be moving around the crew guy, and on two, I'll be right in the scene. Maybe that's actually my own way of not being uh, not being sure. Well, that loosens you up, too. Yeah, I guess. Um, 